Dragon Fly coming out with a victory. Can you explain to me what you yelled on the mic after the fight? It's 10 p.m. on a Sunday night. The phone is ringing and it's the UFC. Dana White or Hunter Campbell is on the line and tells you you're the next challenger for the world title. The annoyance and fatigue quickly goes away and you get up and run a mile to prepare for the biggest fight of your life. That title shot is the reason why they all do it, but out of 600 or so fighters on the active roster, a handful are rewarded by that rare phone call. And for the most part, you challenge for the title only one time in your career. Huh. June 1st, Newark, New Jersey pay-per-view, main event. Islam versus Poirier. Well, unless you happen to be one of these guys. Because Adesanya wants it. Nobody wants to fight Yo Romero. This guy wants him on his resume, wants him to be part of his legacy. Whether due to their own popularity, backstage politics, circumstances, or sheer luck, some fighters get title shot after title shot while the rest of the division seeds in jealousy and cries favoritism. You wish you were one of these guys, but here's the sad truth. They still couldn't do it. I'm kind of getting self-conscious about the promotion of smoking in the intros of my video. What if I'm promoting a bad habit to such influenceable kids like you are? But with the sponsor of today's video, I'm guilt-free. Fume is an award-winning flavored air device that contains absolutely no nicotine. There's also no vapor, so you can use it pretty much anywhere. And it comes with a multitude of delicious flavors like crisp mint and orange vanilla. Physiology shows stopping a bad habit cold turkey is very hard on your brain. Fume works by replacing your hand-to-mouth fixation, calming nervous tension and anxiety with magnets, snaps and clicks, and through the non-addictive and natural plants flavors, you can replace your bad habit with a healthy one. Now hear me out. Use my code FIGHTING to get your free fume base when you order the journey pack. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to get your free fume base when you order your journey pack today. Number 1. Alexander Gustafsson Alexander Gustafsson is still known as the guy who gave John Jones one of the toughest fights of his career. It was such a close fight. When the, when the scorecards are being tabbed and you, uh, you know, you're just sitting there waiting for the decision, did you think you had it? You know, I didn't know. He was supposed to be an easy title defense at UFC 165, but he made the seemingly invincible champion work, bleed, and suffer. The first three were close, but Jones rallied in the championship rounds and won the decision. Finally, John Jones had a worthy rival, and of course, a rematch was in the works. Who doesn't want to see this rematch? You know what I mean? <laughs> the rematch we all wanted to see was postponed indefinitely, with Alexander Gustafsson losing to Anthony Johnson and John Jones losing to the wheel. When Daniel Cormier won the vacant 205 pound title, at UFC 187. Gustafsson, despite getting knocked out in his last fight, was selected as his first defense. It was an undeserved title shot, but the Mahler gave the new champion all he could handle at UFC 192. He came this close to beating Cormier, but the championship rounds proved to be the difference yet again, and DC won the fight by split decision. October 3rd, sorry, 2015, Alexander Gustafsson and I just truly left every part of ourselves inside of the Octagon in Houston. I remember watching James Harden, Dwight Howard, those guys going crazy next to the octagon. Gustafson won his next two fights in nearly five years after UFC 165. Jones versus Gustafson was official for UFC 232 for the vacant title. This was what Gustafson had waited years for, but unfortunately for him, Jones, empowered with pictograms, ran through him and crushed his hopes and dreams for good. Three tries, came very close two times, and then got fed to a roided Jones in his last. He just shut me down very early in the first round, and that was it. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't move at all. That is a brutal end. Number two, Stephen Thompson. When Wonderboy utterly decimated former welterweight champion Johnny Hendricks, the entire division was put on notice. A clinical victory over Ryrie McDonald next left no doubt that he was the next challenger for the 170 pound title and the person holding the belt was Tyron Woodley. My resume speaks for itself and I will fight Wonderboy November 12th and everybody will see why I'm the best welterweight in the world. In the co-main event of an absolutely stacked UFC 205 card, Wonderboy and Woodley went all five rounds and both of them got their hands raised at the end as the fight was a draw. Woodley inflicted more damage and nearly finished Wonderboy in the fourth round, but Thompson was far more active. 
for once. A Woodley fight was so good that he was awarded the fight of the night bonus, and Thompson had performed well enough that Dana White was open to an immediate rematch. I you rematch him, man. I, I think that it was a draw, and uh, the fight was ridiculous. It was a fight of the night. You do it again. That rematch took place at UFC 209, and Thompson, a sage in the striking, had 25 minutes of data to use against Tyron Woodley. The champion was even more massive than usual, but so was Wonderboy. And in the second shot, just months after the first one, he did the bare minimum, and we were bored to tears with a 24 minute staring contest. The one minute of action was from Tyron Woodley, and that was enough for the judges to give him the victory by a majority decision. The two fights were extremely close. I could have done a little bit more out there, but what happened happened and they got to move on from there. Well, if Wonderboy landed one more kick at UFC 209, we would have gotten a new champion, but he came this close to edging out a decision not once but twice and just barely missed it. Number 3. Chad Mendez at one point, Chad Mendez was the best fighter to emerge out of Team Alpha Male. A highly accomplished college wrestler and built like Mini Hulk, Mendez was near unstoppable at featherweight. Too fast, too strong, and too good of a wrestler. And with a nice win streak, Mendez challenged Jose Aldo at UFC 142. And with such a high-level wrestling background, Mendez was thought of as one of Aldo's toughest defenses. That first attempt for Mendez ended with a knee to the jaw and a knockout. That was a mix of power too, me coming in hard, right. him throwing it. So that's both forces coming into that. Mendez took that personally and began to knock out the other featherweights all the way to a rematch with Aldo. Fuck this guy up. The second fight took place at UFC 170. Aldo still ended up winning again, sending Mendez to the back of the line, but not for too long. The season title challenger was called to replace Aldo at UFC 189. It's time to take what's mine, baby! Conor McGregor and Chad Mendes competed for the interim featherweight title, and despite a heavy wrestling game plan, Mystic Max struck again and knocked out Mendes in the closing moments of the second round, just as he had predicted. Three title shots for Chad and about a million for Faber. Team Alpha Male is truly cursed, guys. Number 4. Dustin Poirier I'm pretty sure this one is valid despite Poirier winning the interim lightweight title. That counts as gold, but interim belts might as well be silver because the real gold is the undisputed belt, and that's something Dustin Poirier was never able to capture. Hurts to admit. Also, the fact that you have not checked into Patreon hurts as well, like a punch to the gut from Francis Ngannou. Do check it out, but only after we're done here. Following his win over Max Holloway, Dustin, the interim champion, faced Habib, the undisputed champion, and as we all know, UFC 242 was not a good night for Dustin. Habib pretty much walked through him, but Poirier was still young and he kept busy building his resume and star. After beating Conor McGregor twice, the UFC awarded the now popular lightweight star a shot at the new champion, Charles Oliveira. Underdogs. Of course, everybody's fighting against adversity, but the guys who were counted out a couple times and, and made it happen. And I'm trying to have an answer that list as it over here. Poirier was able to compete with Charles and had him hurt, but it was another submission loss at the end. Two title fights and two submission losses. Hopefully, a possible third time was the charm for Dustin Poirier. Do that, Islam. That's boxing. This is not boxing, but this is MMA, man. Well, you're going to sleep like it's boxing. Or maybe not. For his third shot at the title, Dustin Poirier showed up to UFC 302 like a man possessed, pulling his shorts up every two seconds and going to war with Islam, but the champion was simply too much, and regrettably, Poirier lost by submission yet again. Fighting the three greatest lightweights of all time for the belt is what Diamond had to go through, but his legacy shall remain intact. Dustin is a dog, you know. He will bite, kick, punch. Happy to finish him, but this guy, one of the best, still one of the best in the world. Number 5. Yoel Romero Despite looking and performing like a comic superhero, Romero was often neglected by the UFC, and for a period of time he sat on the sidelines despite being the rightful number one contender. The very first time he competed for gold was against Whitaker, and while the label was interim title, we all knew the victor was going to end up becoming the undisputed champion sooner rather than later. Romero the beast, I gotta go with him. It's a hard one. Uh, if I have to pick one, uh... I picked Romero. At UFC 213, Romero was defeated by former welterweight Robert Whitaker, but he was given another interim title opportunity, this time against Luke Rockhold. Sadly, Romero missed weight, but went on to knock out Luke Rockhold, leaving the UFC no other option but to book a rematch between Romero and Whitaker. Australia have the, the French champion in the, in the history of the UFC. Cuba needed two. 
that's what I do. The rematch was much closer than the first one, but Whitaker went 2 0 against Romero. Three opportunities, and at 40 something, you'd think that would be the end of his championship hopes, but there was a new king at 185, and that new king handpicked Romero. Yes, he's coming off losses, but I don't want to sit around and wait on the shelf. And he's a guy that everyone's scared to call out, so yeah. I wish he didn't, because Adesanya vs. Romero was one of the worst title fights in UFC history. It was the fourth and last chance for Yoel, but he still could not hack it. I don't know whether to be happy for them or feel sad about their inability to win the big one. Lucky or unlucky? Blessed or cursed? Personally, I'd go for the latter. At some point, when you keep failing in title matches, you end up as the answer to a depressing piece of UFC trivia. Who keeps failing despite being given opportunity after opportunity? It's this guy. Your label a runner-up, a gatekeeper, someone who is simply not good enough to win the top prize in the sport. Internally, every loss builds a cancer in your soul, and at one point you even begin to wonder, am I even good enough to win it? The record gives you a clear answer. Ouch. Get YouTube SEO Masterclass, editing, breakdowns, all previous and upcoming videos, music, playlists, downloadable thumbnails, your name in these wonderful credits, and so much more on Patreon. Have a look at it right here. And with that being said, I gotta bounce. Catch y'all in the next one. Peace out.